So from here, we've got the study of leaves, and now I'm going to create an imaginary landscape around it based on these leaves. So these will be the focal point of the landscape. The rest of it's going to be out of my imagination, um, but having this little reference to reality is really going to make the, the picture seem a lot more realistic like I painted it outdoors. Um, it seems like it might be quite difficult from this point to make the rest out of my head, but basically it's just using the colors that I've already pre-mixed and adding them in a combination around the canvas. Um, but the eye will be drawn back into where the detail is, which is the study of the leaves themselves and the rest of the painting and the colors will just um, harmonize the picture and tell me where I can put trees and other things to make the composition more interesting. So I might just start by starting with the dark local color of each of the leaves, putting them in a combination around and slowly bring the composition together. So now I just put a smattering of dark red around in basic shapes that um, are similar to the leaves I've painted before. And in between these red uh, splotches, now I'm going to put some green, which will provide the grass and also a contrast between the red and the green. Now there's a bit of a stark contrast between the kind of diffuse forms of the red and the green compared with the detail in the leaves in the center. So I might add in some different colors, especially um, the orangish color that I get from the leaf on the left. And again, that's just gonna bring up the contrast and add a bit more visual interest. And now I'm going to do the same with the yellow ochre. So now I've got a nice combination of the three different local colors, the darkest local colors of the leaves, um, but still it's not gelling. I think that's mainly because of the, it's missing the darks from underneath and the shadows. So now I might come back into my dark neutral mixed in with a bit of the dark magenta and start to put the shadows on the other side of the leaves. That's a bit better. Now I need to add the lights to again, bring them up to uh, the amount of detail that I've got in the centerpiece leaves. So just using the lighter tones of each of the three local colors, bring in some highlights. Now I think because it's starting to get a bit busy, um, the eye naturally tends to go into where the detail is, which is the leaves in the center. And I was thinking I could start to put veins and the stems on the leaves on the outside, but it's important to just have one visual center of the picture and the rest can kind of be the backup, so to speak. Um, so rather than do that, I might just start to add other elements that might help to make it more dynamic, such as grass. And with the grass, um, I'll just use the dark green that I've already pre-mixed and then a lighter green to do the highlights. And that'll again just add a little bit of a, a dynamic element to the composition and take the emphasis off the leaves that I've put around just so we don't notice this so much. So the composition is starting to come together, but now I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do with the top half of the picture. Um, I know that it's going to recede back into a landscape and I'll put some trees in there to break it up, but I might just start to put in some larger forms to see um, exactly how I'm going to put that together. The leaves basically have a, a compositional direction of top left to bottom right. So I may try to put something up in the top right hand corner that will add a bit of interest up there and create a diagonal. I'm just going to start with my dark neutral and I'm going to mix in a little bit of um, the lighter tint of that which is more of a grey because everything in the background tends to, uh, through atmospheric perspective to be a bit more grey and that'll just help to push that back. So 
So now that I've got the background put in, some basic trees and forms like that, I might come in with a slightly darker brown and see if I can modulate that and just make it um, a bit more interesting and find out where these trees are going to be. Now that I've got that in with the darks, now it's time to go back to the light, so I'm going to put the sky behind. Now in this palette I don't actually have a blue, so a blue sky is out of the question, but being a winter type scene, I think a grey sky will suit it more anyway. So I've already got a light neutral mixed up from the dark neutral with a tint of white, and I'll just go ahead and put that in flat. And as is often the case, the sky is generally lighter towards the horizon, so I'll just use a bit of pure white and mix that in while it's still wet. And then again, I can mix a bit of the dark in at the top while it's still wet and bring that down as well. Now the colors that I'm using, besides the yellow oxide, the magenta and the permanent green light are quite transparent. So I'm finding that the first layer, um, because it's transparent, it's not quite as dark as I want it to be. Um, I can't actually mix any darker colors than what I've got, but every additional layer of paint is going to darken it a little bit. So I'm just gonna come back in with some greens over the trees, and it's not only gonna make them more green, but it will also help to darken it a little bit. Now I'd like to add some sort of a sense of light in the background as well, keeping an idea that the light is coming from the right hand side, I might just add some highlights on the rights of the trees. And rather than using a light green, um, I might just use a yellow ochre which will help keep with those autumnal colors. So now I've got interest in the foreground with the study of the leaves, and I've got interest in the background with the imaginary landscape, but in between the two there's, there's really nothing to catch the eye, and I don't want any kind of detail, but I might just have a bit of light flooding through the landscape. Um, it's a fairly traditional device landscape painters have used for centuries in that you build a landscape um, either dark light dark in the foreground, middle ground, background, or light dark light. And in this case I think I might go dark light dark, so I've got kind of a darkish foreground, and a darkish background, and then I'll just have a beam of light shooting through the middle, and just help to break that space. I've got lots of greens and ochres, but there's not really any kind of orange colors coming through um, so strongly, so I might choose something based on the orange. As it comes forward in space, I'm going to need to modulate the color um, so that it appears that there's some sort of spatial relationship happening. So I might switch to a more saturated pure yellow ochre for that. It's very much like abstract painting at this point. There's really no right or wrong. It's just really what, what's working and um, what you want to do with the landscape. So I always generally tend to work the same way. That once I've added lights, the next stage is to add darks. So I might just um, go back into my dark neutral and bring in some shadows from the left-hand side. Now, I'm looking at the background and it kind of looks like beyond those trees, the earth just kind of drops away. So I might just want to put in something in kind of a mid-tone gray to suggest that there are maybe rolling hills or more trees back there. There, that's a bit more interesting. Now I can actually come back into my light yellow ochre tint, and because I used yellow ochre as the highlight on the green trees, if I use the yellow ochre tint in the background, it'll again seem like there's a bit of light on those trees as well. I'm sort of feeling like the contrast is a bit stark, but um, I can always come over that with a glaze later and it'll help to chill out those highlights. But um, I might for now go back into the sky with some pure white with just a little bit of gray in it and try to clean up the sky, maybe add some clouds. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of white in the sky for some clouds and to just break up the sky a little bit and then I'll come back and put some highlights in the uh, background. So those lights in the clouds really helped to push the sky back just then. And now I'm going to bring up some fully strength, fully saturated yellow ochre on those uh, trees right here just to bring those forward a bit. 
Also, I just find that the painting's getting kind of towards the gray right now, and I really love to use as much color as possible. And even with this limited palette, we can still really get some good punchy colors, so I'm going to see if I can bring that up. So that helped to bring those trees up. And now just in front of that, I wanna bring up the grass and the other leaves as well, but I might shift to a bit of the, um, the pure permanent green mixed with the yellow ochre, just again to give it a bit of a hue shift. So now I'm quite happy with what's happening in the background, and I might go back into the foreground and see if I can get it to um, do a bit more work as well. Um, I'm still noticing that the focus is still on these four leaves. So what I might try to do is to bring in stuff in the corners just peeking in from the side of the canvas. Some really dark darks and some really light lights. And it'll help just to move the emphasis away from the middle of the composition. Using my dark magenta for this. And now for some lights. I really like what the yellow ochre is doing. It's really bringing up the saturation. It's, it's one of the colors that I can use and it's most saturated and not disturb the overall color scheme. So I might just continue to put in a bit more of that in a lot larger areas. And now I'm gonna put in some more grass, again with the dark green in the beginning and then the light green to add the highlights. Basically, because it's a dark green, I need to put it in front of something light so that it stands out. If I put a dark green over another dark color, it'll just blend right in. So I'll try to find areas that have a light already there, and then I'll just put the dark green grass over the top and it'll be more noticeable. And the same thing applies for the light green. I'll just find spots where there's dark, and then I'll put the light green over the top and it'll really stand out. Now I might come back into the background again and add some dark uh, magenta for the trunks and bits of dark magenta throughout the landscape just to kind of break it up a bit. And now some more highlights. Now the other thing I can do at this point, um, using the same technique that I used for the grass to make it more dy dynamic and break up the leaf forms, um, I can start to put in some more stems of the leaves sticking up with the dark magenta. So at this point, I can continue to work with the painting, adding more detail and adding more colors, lights and darks. Um, but it's a fairly busy composition and I like the loose impressionistic feel of it already. So I might just put some highlights on some of the trunks of the trees with a light magenta and call it that. I think that'll do it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.